YouTube. Hey guys, hey everybody. Um, just been going to talk a little bit about consistency. Hey guys, um, so this video uh, will be sort of going back and forth with some flashbacks um, to some older videos and, and things I may have said. Um, simply to establish what I believe is a sort of a maintenance, um, necessary maintenance uh, guide for your tanks. Uh, something I'm doing, um, something you may want to listen to and just kind of see if any of it works for you. So I will be adding on to this video in the future as well with more information but for now I figure let's start with a basic uh, maintenance video and see um, what else I need to add on with time. Thanks. Um, consistency. What am I talking about? Um, well, if you're sort of having issues and something's not doing well, your fish are not hardy, I'll talk about that too. So I did mention that I'll talk about hardy fish. What is a hardy fish? A hardy fish is a rough and tough fish that can survive a lot of uh, water quality changes, temperature changes, um, a lot of mineral and, and it can go th through a lot of bad conditions. Um, so how do you get a fish to get to that point? Well, it's about consistency, right? If you do a lot of work around your tanks, you do a little bit of changes here and there, you um, monitor them, you, you, you know, you do water changes and, and so on. Um, the fish gets used to you doing changes and you going through things. And just a shot of Max here, he's also with us. And then he might scoop down on me. Um, so the hardiness is basically something that's um, happens over time but so your fish is hardy because it's known the aquarium conditions it's used to your water um, for, since it was a baby right and that's that's the idea is also you know get your fish used to the water you can provide it providing that it's good water quality and that will make your fish hardy towards your fish tank the minute that it's used to your water quality, the minute that it's used to your upkeep, the minute that the fish is used to what you do for it and it sticks around and it does not die on you and it does not get sick, that's a hardy fish for you. What do you need to do? Well, consistency is something that's extremely vital, extremely important. Um, what you do is um, you have to be consistent on your water changes, you have to be consistent on your upkeep, um, like cleaning up the tanks, uh, just overall general um, maintenance, just when you hang around, when you clean a little bit here, a little bit there, do a little bit for them, be consistent. If that's what you're doing, do it regularly, do it constantly as a consistent, uh, in a consistent way so that your fish are used to that consistency. All these tanks, um, you need to do a, um, you need to clean your filter regularly for each tank. Once everything is um, set up and you're reaching a point of um, being able to consistently maintain your tanks the way um, you best can do it. Obviously, don't overdo it if you can't. Do a lot and tons and tons of things. Just do what you can, but do it consistently. Hey guys, hey YouTube, Martin here. Uh, excuse the mess uh, behind me. But this video is, I want to show you a really cool way, actually, how important water pumps can be in your, in your, for you, how beneficial they can be, how much they can help you. So I have this big water pump 
um, it is a 2500 um, just using a regular water hose you just attach it and here we go look at the water going and I'm not doing anything I'm not using buckets I'm not uh, in a hurry to do anything I just uh, let the water go filter it out and then what I'll do after that is I'll power the water back up in basically I'll swap ends I'll put the end where the pump is here into the tub and then the other end back here Just to show you guys the trick I do and I'm um, sure you many of the good uh, guys that want their tanks really clean do that as well you can do this right by the filter exit or you can do it by your um, water uh, pump you basically I have my net just uh, sitting here just in front of it and all these little okay I don't know what uh, my flower horn is doing he's helping me too um, but what's going on is I'm collecting all these really tiny pieces of dirt and um, that float around in your water without you even knowing it so I uh, actually used a net trick quite a lot um, and depending on how fine the debris that you want to pick up is you can line the net with a, a bit of gauze so that even the finest stuff gets cut up in it so it's sort of like a really quick um, filter that you can just uh, stick in let the net pick up whatever is floating around even if you sit let it sit there overnight uh, just make sure none of the fish get hurt getting into the net I usually keep an eye on it I usually do it, do it during the day and with my bigger fish I have no problem doing it overnight it's also a good useful tip so to add to that I've also um, got a ton of other cool things I've tried uh, gravel vacuum cleaners I've done um, the suctioning gravel cleaners um, I've done Brita jugs that I've experimented with and water pumps with Brita jugs um, a bit of other water pump experimentation there's a ton of things I've uh, I've tried um, so check out some of the older videos you might see some of that but eventually uh, bookmark um, things for yourself to do the water changes to do the to do the uh, filter change but there's more than that you have to clip off the um, the bad leaves in the tank you have to pick up any debris in the tank I mean those are just little things that to you they mean nothing really oh it's just a leaf floating but to the fish as soon as that leaf starts its decomposition cycle it releases um, nitrates and, and, and so does the poop at the bottom of the tanks so do any pieces of any dead fish you may have seen so all that is important and for anyone that has plastic plants um, your biggest um, problem wouldn't be the dead leaves or anything like that but probably algae um, something that uh, you have to do is clean your glass um, clean off the algae because if you let it sit if you let it go that thing will overrun your tank it's happened to me if you watch my previous video it's easily um, just spread and the algae can take over your tank so another cool thing is not to leave your new tank anywhere close to an open window with direct sunlight because that's when the algae can give you a really big struggle and take over your tank and your tank will turn green the, the glass will have this green algae on it you have to spend hours of cleaning um, so you, you want to keep your tank somewhere away from direct sunlight and another quick no-no that I want to mention is do not put um, decorations or or things that are um, metal in nature although I've done it in the past where I put little toy cars in my tanks 
not recommended. Um, some some of the metals can rust. Uh, some of the metals are just not good. Um, they provide. They do um, um, taint the water. The water can um, get too much iron in it. I mean, there's all kinds of things that can happen. There's copper uh, poisonings. There's all sorts of things. So be very, very careful when you're adding anything that is metal to the inside of your tank. I would say for the most part, don't do it. Um, unless it's something that... Um, actually, I don't think of any reason why you would want to add metal to your tank. Um, so that's just another thing I wanted to add on here. Another thing is if you overfeed your fish, and I often do this, I'm very guilty of doing this because I want uh, to see full bellies on my fish. And what happens is that also introduces dirt into your tank. So as I mentioned, I do overfeed my fish, but I don't mean that literally I don't throw on a ton of food that never gets eaten. I mean, it does all get eaten within a half hour or, or less. Um, if you are really overfeeding your fish and your fish don't eat all of the food, the food just sits at the top or sinks to the bottom and you don't have any bottom feed, feeder cleaning fish, oh, you're going to get your fish sick really quick. I mean, it won't take very long before your fish start dying um, so please um, be aware that you don't need to feed a lot. Sometimes these fish can go a week or two without any food whatsoever. So just do a little bit, meaning make sure that, you know, every f fish did try to, to get some food. Even if some didn't get it, that's okay. They'll get it next day, right? Um, but make sure you don't. Uh, that they do uh, at some point somehow, but um, do not overfeed. Over like if you really overfeed, you will have diseases. You will have rot. Um, I find that uh, I've ran into that. I've overfed before, and you can easily get um, rot. Um, you'll see something sticking on the side of your fish. It looks like some kind of mold. That's from overfeeding, believe it or not. A lot of stuff happens when this food is just sitting there and it builds up bacteria and it builds up this this nasty uh, mold and this mold can then easily attack a fish and yeah, don't do that, that's a no-no. Um, so all these little things, even dust in the air, all that stuff piles up and you have to be consistent at getting this stuff cleaned and in con being in control of it slowly but surely over time you will be able to do it so um, keep going with it be consistent about trying don't give up on it even though it's a lot of work don't give up on it be consistent about it like I said I read somewhere that I mentioned this before you can actually go on vacation and go two weeks um, of feeding your your fish, which is um, not against any rules. That's basically because in nature, fish go through long periods where they cannot get any food. So it is normal for them to go for a week or, or, or up to two weeks without food. Um, so watch that video, read the comments, see, see what else people have added on to that. It's just um, um, another thing I read, and I didn't mention in it in the video was um, you can actually it, it's actually recommended to not feed your fish for one day per week. I have not tried this yet. I am getting closer and closer to trying this. But once you start doing it, you have to be consistent about continuing to do it. So that's those are the key things. I want to talk about consistency. I wanted you guys to, to get motivated about being consistent about your tank upkeeps. It's key. That's where 
um, I spent most of my time right now is making sure my tanks um, are being cleaned and maintained. And anything else? Um, well, I found water pumps are very useful to help you. Um, the fish net can be used in a variety of ways, including setting it up right in front of the filter just to capture anything that still gets thrown out of the filter. Some other key things is um, throwing in a little bit of aquarium salt. So I'll show you guys this little uh, thing here. It's just not table salt, it's aquarium salt, right? So what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit. Let me just show you guys here so you can see. Let me just, maybe I should just grab it here. So what I'll do is I'll take a pinch of this stuff just between my two fingers not a lot and as soon as you do some water changes this is a mesh top on on this tank so as soon as you do some water changes we'll just throw some in and even if the fish eat it that is fine um, as far as like the fish behavior what's going wrong in your tanks keep an eye on it any signs of anything weird anything abnormal, any disease popping up, you'll be the first one to spot it. You'll get it right away. You'll know something's wrong. Something's not like it was yesterday. And that's why you do a regular, consistent upkeep. Um, so the idea is, uh, as well, if you add anything into your tank, any decoration, any plant, any... Um, any chemical, anything can throw off your balance. It can throw off the the minerals in the tank. It can throw off your pH levels. It can throw off just about anything in the tank. So um, plastic, adding plastic uh, decorations. Um, you know, a lot of times you buy the decorations. What you technically want to do is you buy your decoration, you bring it home, you don't put it into your fish tank first. What you do first is you run it under extremely hot top tap water first. That way it's uh, kind of cleansed off of any anything that could be on um, the decoration, any bacteria. I mean, if you buy it from a fish store, you know, could be hundreds of people that have touched that particular plant or, 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 or decoration. Um, same thing with plants. Plants, you do not want to put them under hot water, but I uh, mean, you could give them a salt bath. You could, uh, you know, put them in a little bit of salt for like 20 seconds, take them out. I mean, um, and then rinse it out under lukewarm water, then put them in your tank. There's a ton of things that you can do like that that can prevent um, from anything really drastically affecting your your water quality, your water levels, as you continue to uh, monitor and watch your tanks and add on to them. And I'm sure you will add on to your tanks, whether it's a decoration, a plant, another fish. Um, those are all important things. And about adding another fish, I mentioned this in a lot of videos. I won't do a flashback to that, but I mentioned this consistently. And that's the key word of the day, consistency. Um, when you go out to the store, uh, keep in mind when you're picking a fish out of a tank, make sure there is no additional sick fish in that tank. If there are sick fish in the tank, you want to probably not buy from that fish tank. And the second thing is when you bring in y your, your fish, um, you bring it home, you found the fish, regardless what fish it is. Um, you have your fish bag, um, what you want to do is open your fish bag and put in your net in there and take out the fish only and then put it in your tank um, or into a little plastic container on the side of your tank that, that the fish can sit in there at, uh, like inside the tank, right? And just kind of get acquainted with the water and with the other fish before you let it out of the container. That's actually the proper way of releasing a fish into a tank is uh, have a little container set up inside the tank. Um, like a, they sell these little um, 
cure containers or, or, or for fish that are pregnant, anything like that. They sell these little containers. So you have one of these um, ready before you come home. It's sitting inside the tank. You bring the fish home in a bag. You put your net in there. You take it out. Um, and you put it inside that little, um, I call it a penalty box, on the side of your tank. And you let it sit there for, I don't know, I would say half a day to, to, to a day. Sometimes you can do it even longer. Um, it really depends. Um, so uh, then at some point you release it back into the tank and you take the, the, the little penalty box out. So um, that's key. And the reason for that is you do not want that, that bag with that water, that whole water, you do not want to dump it into your tank. And I've repeated this many times because uh, some fish stores have bacteria in that water. Even though you don't see it, even though all the fish were healthy in that tank, you do not want to dump the water in um, into your tank. Um, personal preference here and suggestion. For the most part, I would uh, prefer to stay away from live food feeding. Um, some of the big predator fish like you see behind me, I have a lot of cichlid fish. That's why you're watching Martin Cichlid Fishing. Um, they um, do require some live food once in the blue moon, some of them, but a lot of them, if they get used to pellets and things like that, they won't eat, eat any any little fish you introduce into the tank, no matter, I mean, even if the guy is, uh, you know, 20 feet longer, I mean, just exaggerating here, but th they might not even go for any live minnows or, 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 or guppy fish or whatever you, you may get for a live food. But the idea is try and stay away from live food because um, I've done it at the beginning and I ran into something uh, where they do get sick after a while. Uh, minnows, they're not kept in very good environments. They, they're, they're, you know, some of them have diseases as well. I mean, there's a lot of things with feeding live fish that is not good. And two more things we have not touched on yet in this video about all overall maintenance and, and consistency. Um, number one, you can see behind me, there's some air bubbles that is absolutely key if you have um, big fish there's some fish that can live without air supply but not a lot of them um, so you need to have air bubbles it's always good to have more than the less unless you're getting into a planted tank then you know you still want to have some air supply but you don't want to overdo a ton of ton of air like you know three times more than you should because then the plants um, won't do as well because they all need carbon dioxide to grow versus air in in the tank right they they eat carbon dioxide uh, co2 right they eat uh, co2 and they um, spit out um, oxygen right everybody should know that um, if you're getting into um, fish, uh, I mean, uh, plant care. So that's the other thing. And the most important is temperature. Um, so when you buy fish, they, they, they do your homework, see what temperature they require. Most fish can go 70 to 82 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, but um, so some can go lower, some, some can go higher, uh, some have optimal levels that are pretty high temperatures, some don't like the really hot temperature, depends where they came from. So do your research, um, if you are going to go to the store and buy some fish, um, make sure that they are um, close in the same levels. Um, like pH levels, temperatures, those are the two I would worry about, pH levels and temperatures. Um, oh, and one more thing, and you would have seen me mess up on this in my older videos, is fish size. Um, a lot of fish stores sell you the cutest fish you will ever see, 
and people buy them and take them home and they feed them and they grow and they grow huge. Believe it or not, pet stores sell fish that grow three feet big, but they're like less than a centimeter when you buy them or a centimeter or two. And um, you don't know that unless you read their labels and they tell you maximum fish size, 36 inches or, or something crazy like that. So keep an eye on that. That's absolutely key for you not to make mistakes um, at the beginning, right? Um, check the fish size when you are ready to buy a fish at a pet store. Make sure you don't buy a fish that only grows two inches or five inches with a fish that grows two feet. Uh, one will eat the other, most likely. So um, another thing is check the pH levels. Make sure they're in the same pH level range. Make sure they are also in the same temperature range, right? So um, that they both have a good life in your fish tank. That one doesn't suffer because the pH level is too high which pH levels means acidity, the water acidity uh, in your tank. Like, um, and hard, there is also hardness and things like that. Like me, I'm in the mountain area, so I have very hard water and um, pH of like 8 coming out of the tap, right? So if I buy a fish um, that needs a pH level of 7, I have to use chemicals to lower that pH level, so I have to use natural, there are certain leaves that you can buy that you can throw in that can lower the pH levels, and you have to do those test strips constantly to test your water levels for that one fish, but, but if you have two fishes and one likes 8.0 pH and one likes 7.0 pH, you're running into trouble, you're going to be, one fish is going to be constantly not happy, uh, because its its body won 't feel right it, 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 you know the organs won 't work properly um, so yeah, watch that and do a little bit of research on pH levels, fish size, and temperatures um, for for every fish and one more you don 't want to put very aggressive fish with non aggressive fish so there 's different um, types of fish. There is the fish that are like community fish, like your guppies, your mollies, um, good beginner fish to start with, a lot of the tetras as well. Um, those fish have two to five life expectancies for the most part. Um, then there is the cichlid fish. Um, they are aggressive. They are predators. They eat other fish and they... Um, are sold in the same stores, right? And they grow anywhere from like, um, actually, let's say up to eight inches is for, for most of them, some five, six inches, but um, then there's the bigger ones. They grow up to 16 inches, 12 inches, and some of them grow three feet, right? So um, you don't want to mix the aggressive fish with, um, the community fish, right? Because as they grow, one will eat the other. So like I said, um, be, be very cautious on that. So I wanted to add a couple little things before we go. Um, so in while you're doing the upkeep, if you have multiple tanks, and multiple tanks are fun, get yourself some test strips. Um, I use these Tetra test strips. And they're really cool. They have um, all the information, including how to uh, help and eliminate all these possible sign warning signs. You know, don't get too crazy about it, but worry about pH levels. Worry about things like um, nitrate, if you want. And, and I forgot to mention one of the more important ones is ammonia. Ammonia is the pee and uh, just nasty, stinky stuff. Um, if you ever have dirty water and you smell it and it stinks, that's usually ammonia. And that's another thing you want to monitor with those um, test strips or tests. So final word of caution for everything so far is um, a couple things. 
um, number one, your electrical plugins. Don't plug in too many things into one socket. Number two, when you're working with water pumps, they can, you have to be extremely careful. You can leak a lot of water everywhere. Very important to keep an eye on that. Like you wouldn't believe whenever you're working with water pumps. Another thing you may not know about the heaters you buy for your tank, this little tube that ha that is a heater. When you're doing your water changes, make sure you unplug the heater. If you don't, it can literally explode um, because it's not in the water. Um, what happens is there's a temperature change. It's a tempered glass, and sometimes it just can't handle the, the stress, and it'll just burst inside, or, or something will just go wrong with your heater, it's, and it can be dangerous. It can actually electrocute somebody. Uh, depends on what heater you buy, they're getting better and better, but that is key. Even the new ones uh, can burst on you. Um, let's see if there is anything else here. Yeah, if you overuse medication, like I said before, uh, you can literally um, create a cocktail of medicine in your tank, which uh, God knows what combinations can kill your fish, right? So those are the, the key warnings. Um, filters as well. When you're changing your water, shut down your filter uh, and the heater, right? The two things you want to really shut down. I would also recommend shut down the lights when you're doing your water um, change because if you don't, sometimes your light can fall in because you'll be moving the canopy uh, off and, and things like that. You can literally sometimes drop the light into the water and it can electrocute you as well. So be very careful when working with fish tanks, even though they look simple, they, you know, those things, you don't want to learn it the hard way. And don't um, forget about your filters. If you have a canister filter or even a top filter, um, like I said, it's key to do regular checkups and maintenance on your filters uh, because if they get plugged up, um, they can overheat when you're not home. And um, that's the key idea behind regular maintenance on your filters. If they um, do something wrong, water can flow out through them sometimes, flood your, your home. Um, so maintain your filters. Um, um, you know, if they can overheat, they can burn out. I mean, you can literally have a $300 filter and you forgot, oh, it's a good filter. I'm not going to do anything with it for a couple months. Well, um, you could probably burn out your filter. You could um, <clears throat> do a lot of things like that. So regular maintenance, consistency in your maintenance. Make sure you don't forget. Write it down on a piece of paper like I do when your next um, like filter chain, filter cleaning is like every month or every three months or every two months. I would never leave it more than three months. Um, so some of the, the people that have had filters for a long time and they haven't done it for like a year, oh man, you better do it. I mean, just because of your own safety, uh, not so much the fish anymore at that point because um, you know, I mean, you already see the effects on your fish, but, um, and your plants, if your plants, oh, that's a key sign, right? If you're watching your plants, all of a sudden you see yellow leaves and, and things like that. That is a good sign that you have a lot of nitrates, um, entering the tank. And it's usually because you haven't changed your water and you haven't cleaned the filter, all that goo that's sitting in the filter, it's all fish crap. And, and dirt from your plants and it's creating nitrate and it's basically like this poison that's just being put back into the tank as your tank water filters through all that goop and um, al alkalinity there's hardness things all these things are on these measuring strips they can measure all five of them so um, yeah that's important and I've even seen some measuring 
um, some some measuring. It shouldn't. It wouldn't be a strip. It's something you place in your tank, but it's to measure your CO two levels. How much CO two you have in your tank? Like I am putting CO two in my fifty five gallon tank, which is an experiment uh, going on right now. So CO two is not needed to grow to have a couple plants in your tank or to grow plants but it is um, something that you will need if you want a f ton of plants and have them grow out it does help if you have just a couple plants uh, go ahead and test it out um, but it isn't needed um, lighting is key make sure you have a very good light and um, yeah, you can look up all kinds of different lights they have at the store. Ask about that at your local pet store. Hey guys, uh, Martin here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in two videos. It's a CO2 injector for a 15 gallon tank. Um, however, I am going to add this to my 55 gallon tank because I don't think I need a lot more co2 in the tank than that at this point i can always add another one of these so um just going to show you i got some bullets for this as well these co2 bullets they're about what 20 bucks for three of these guys should last for a while because the neat surprise about this box and the CO2 injector, excuse the camera there. Here's what it comes with. It comes with one CO2 box uh, right in the box, right? Like one of these bullets right in the box. So I bought three more that should last a little bit. Has a valve. I guess this would regulate it and it has the actual device that goes into the tank that will hold the CO2 and release it. It also comes with a tubing and this in my store anyway is about 40-45 bucks. Uh, oh and there is instructions. So this is part one. Um, even though it's recommended for just 15-20 gallon tanks, right? I'm going to do this in my 55 gallon tank and um, see how it goes. If I need to do another one, I'll do another second one on the other side of the tank. That should hopefully bring it to, I don't know how many of these I would need, but I think one should be enough. I'm not really looking to be um, full time in in invested in CO2 in this tank but I do feel it could be of benefit to me so I do use this and as well I already mentioned this I use this only once a month I put this in and uh, just a little bit and you see a huge difference in in plants within uh, like a day you'll see them start to pick up and, 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 well, at least I do see that in my tanks. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm going to try and get my 55 gallon plants moving. I'm going to try and get them um, some CO2, something that will get them to go and grow out even further. Uh, even though this plant is growing just fine without CO2, this is the sword tail um, but I've added new plants and I wish that they um, start going and growing for me so CO2 seems like the next natural step in this tank and I'll probably attach it to one of the sides or on the back. Hey guys, um, so this is part two to the CO2 injector. All it is is just these two chambers these two plastic cups um, attached with a rubber tubing that go to the top nozzle where you can literally unscrew it a little like 
and then screw it back on. Oops, provided I have it sitting on the right location there. Okay, so if you unscrew it, that will release the gas through the tubing, and you can see see that air pocket. That's actually CO2 gas. That is what it's supposed to look like, and this is CO2 gas as well. And that's what it uh, will do once you release it. And it'll just sit there, and as soon as this thing fills up with water, you'll just unscrew it at the top again, and then it'll release the CO2 in here. And it's the same process over and over and over again until your cartridge runs out. Once your CO2 cartridge runs out, you simply have to insert another one. There's still um, there's a mess in that tank right now. I'll do an update on it. Um, I just added uh, soil to it, and I've added some other nutri nutrients in there. So um, I'm trying to get some of this these plants to really pick up and get healthy. And I'm introducing some CO2 into the tank, and and it's it, there's a little tester you can do to measure your CO2 level and how much um, you're actually putting in if it's too much or not enough that's the newest thing I've seen it's just the liquid you put into this little thing you stick to the side of the tank it's pretty cool I'm gonna try it and show you guys one day but not right now um, I'm pretty confident with the amount of CO2 I'm adding so that's just something I wanted to add on to the video thanks so let's um, go over everything and um, so I started off talking about consistent consistency. So be, con be consistent doing what you can for your fish tank, like water changes, if you have life plants, uh, the maintenance of your life plants, like clipping off dead leaves, picking up debris and dead leaves in your tank. Um, you know, uh, measure your, your water quality. Um, but overall, just be consistent about it. Make your life easier. Look into water pumps um, if you feel comfortable with that to to help you change water. Um, I showed you guys what I'm experimenting with. I've added on some CO2 injection for my plants. It's working okay. Um, it's not bad. Um, I've added on substrate as well. I think um, it is a necessary part for the plants, um, as well as, uh, you know, I, I showed you guys I used a little bit of chemical there to help the plants grow. Now, don't overdo it with your chemicals. Um, you don't, the last thing you want to do is create a soup of chemicals in your tank. Then everything is thrown off. The best thing, advice, or I shouldn't say advice, the best thing I've discovered is try and achieve a balance you'll know when you've achieved it because your fish will be happy they will be healthy and they can go for a month or two just being happy and healthy without you worrying about it um, when you've achieved that that's when you've pretty much got it down packed you know you're you're doing well and then you can start experimenting with CO2 injections and whatever else you want to do. Um, so make sure you clean under your decorations as well. If you have plastic decorations, lift them up, siphon the garbage underneath them. Fish often hide and poop under the decorations. So it's something you want to you wanna look at, you know. And that's pretty much everything for now that I wanted to talk about. It's a long video, hopefully you made it to, through to the end, and good luck to you.